Hello everybody and welcome in this video about the Battle of Westmount. In this video I'll be showing you the Klangan Alliance factions. As you will see the rebels are slightly loyal but the Klangans are neutral and chaotic. So they will be strongest in this setup against elves, they will be strongest at night. So let's examine these units. The first one is the Dwarvish Fighters. The Dwarvish Fighter costs 16 gold has a strong melee attack but doesn't have any range. It does by default 21 damage. It also has impact damage which is useful for example against uh, the undead skeletons. It also has high hit points, the dwarvish fighter. While elves usually only have around 33 hit points you will notice that the Dwarves have 38 hit points. So the Dwarvish Fighter, while being more expensive than an Elvish Fighter, does have higher hit points and it also has higher resistance. And this is what makes the Dwarves really shine. The Dwarvish Fighter has 20% resistance against weapons and 10% against the magical times. The big downside of Dwarves is that they only have 4 moves, whereas for example an Elvish Fighter or most other units have at least 5 moves. So the reasonably higher cost than most basic units, the fact that it has lower moves, higher hit points and higher resistance makes it that these units are very good at defense but not so good at offensive play. That is why the dwarves are allied with the uh, outlaws. They will usually have higher moves and they will, uh, the thieves are also very good at uh, being offensive when used correctly. The next unit that we will look at is the Dwarvish Ulf Selker. Sel Sel at 19 gold this unit is rather expensive. It also has a rather weak melee attack. Only 16 damage compared to for example 21 damage on the, El the Dwarvish fighter or 20 damage on the Elvish fighter. However, it has Berserk attack. When used offensively or defensively, this attack presses the engagement until one of the combatants is slain. That means that if you can attack, for example, a mage or something like the shaman with your elf, you are pretty much guaranteed to kill them. This is particularly strong against uh, units that don't have any melee attack, such as the undead uh, unit the uh, the adept the dark adept if we look at the hit point and resistance of this unit it has 34 hit points which is roughly the same as an elvish fighter and it has um, the same resistance as all dwarves however it has lower defense on most terrain another thing i forgot to mention about the dwarves is that they have 60 percent on hills whereas most units only have 50 percent and they get 70% on mountains, whereas most other units only get 60%. This makes a dwarf on a mountain a very defensive unit and very difficult to take down. Next we will look at the Dwarfish Guardsman. At 19 gold this unit is significantly more expensive than the Dwarfish Fighter. It also has lower defense on mountains and hills. However, it also has 50% defense in a, in a village, just like the Elvish fighter. But the most important thing is that this unit has steadfast. That means that it will double all its resistances when it's defending. So instead of 20% blade resistance, this unit while defending will gain 40% blade uh, resistance. This makes this unit uh, very tough to take down on the defense. It also has by default one move more than the uh, Dwarfish Fighter. The melee attack and range attack are not uh, impressive, but it allows you to harass the opponent. The next unit that we will look at is the Dwarfish Thunderer. At 17 gold, this is one gold more expensive than the Dwarfish Fighter. It also has 4 less hit points, the same resistances, the same movement type 
and the same defense. However, where the Dwarvish fighter does not have a ranged attack, the Thunderer has both a ranged and a melee attack. This makes this unit a good all round. However, the attack is very much luck based. This can be a good or a bad thing, depending on the situation. But if you hit, you will hit for all damage. The next unit we will examine is the Footband. The Outlaws are more uh, cheap units compared to the Dwarves. The uh, uh, footpad only costs 14 gold, the poacher 14 and the thief, the cheapest unit, at 13 gold. The footpad has 30 hit points, which is significantly less than the dwarvish fighter. However, this unit has a very high defense on certain terrains, such as hills, mountain, forest, villages and castle. It has 60% uh, defense on flat. However, this high defense is compensated by the fact that this unit has lower hit points, but also has a negative resistance. It has minus 30% blade resistance, minus 20% impact resistance, and minus 20% pierce resistance. That means if you put this unit on low defense terrain, it will be very vulnerable to other units, such as the elvish wolves or the elvish fighter or whatever you're fighting. This unit has both a ranged and a melee attack and it has an impact uh, damage type. This makes this unit particularly strong against skeletons but not particularly strong against many others. It also makes the unit weak against certain uh, scouts such as the cavalryman which has a higher impact resistance. So depending on the situation, you might choose to use uh, footpads or not. You might, you would probably not want to use him as a scout when you're fighting with uh, against loyalists, but you might use him against undead. The next unit that we will examine is the thief. At 13 gold, this is the cheapest uh, unit for the Knalgan uh, alliance, but it also has the lowest hit points. By default, this unit only has 24 hit points. On top of that, it has negative resistances, just like the footpad, but it also shares the high defense, just like the footpad. The special ability of the, this unit is a backstab. You will notice that it does only uh, 18 damage at night, by default. However, if you manage to attack a unit from the opposite side of a uh, of another unit of yours, so if the enemy unit is between your units, then he will do double damage, effectively turning this into 36 damage, uh, into uh, um, 36 damage, yeah, which is uh, very impressive. Is this unit probably has the highest damage for all level one units, compensated by its negative resistances and its low hit point. The correct usage of this unit is vital. Incorrect usage will make this unit very weak. Also another thing to take into account is that it's now it's a uh, favorable time of day, however at, uh, at day it will only do 12 damage. Even if it's backstabbing it will only do 24 damage and you should always be backstabbing with a team. Similarly, the footpad has very low damage at day. It only does 6 damage melee and only 8 in impact. This makes Outlaw, Outlaw significantly ineffective at day. And that is why this is a chaotic uh, faction. So, now it's night again. Let's look at the poacher. By default it does 16 damage on ranged, which is, which is less than for example an elvish archer, however at night it does exactly the same damage. It has 32 hit points by default, which is not that amazing and it costs uh, 14 gold. So the poacher is a rather cheap all round unit that is good at night. It also has better defense in uh, swamps, unlike most, and it also has very good defense in forest. The 
the unit has 20% arcane resistance, but other than that, nothing special. So it it has uh, it's a pretty default unit, except for the fact that it has higher um, defense in certain terrain. The final unit that we will be examining is the Griffin Rider. At 24 gold, this is the most expensive unit. The reason why it's so expensive is because it has a very uh, high movement time. It can fly over all the terrain, which means it has low movement cost. Everything costs only one movement point, and it can move nine uh, hexes. This makes this an, an insanely good scout and very good at uh, village grabbing. It also has a very respectable damage. It does 26 damage on melee, which is more than most units. It also has negative impact resistance, minus 20%. So this unit, while being very expensive, is also very effective. It's important to keep in mind that, yes, uh, this unit is balanced by its cost, so don't recruit too many or you will quickly find out that you don't have enough gold to recruit more units. So now you should have a basic idea what you should recruit when playing a game. For example, in this game, let's examine what, uh, what we should recruit. Um, since I am fighting against elves, That means that I will probably want to use so first of all some footpads to grab these villages. And then uh, other than that I would not recruit more here, I would do it here, but suppose I would just recruit here then I would probably um, go for some fighters, which is the basic unit. I wouldn't go for a Dwarf's Man just yet, not at the beginning of the game. And since we're fighting um, Elves, the Thunderer would definitely be a good choice. So I might go something like this, or you could choose something else. You could choose a Griffin instead of Footpads. A uh, Griffin and let's say an another Thunderer or something else. So I hope this video was somewhat useful for you.